Hey YouTube, if you enjoy these videos, please like, share, and subscribe for more Exploring the American Frontier. The history of the American Frontier is filled with legendary tales of backwoods expeditions and highly skilled tradesmen. But atop the list of folk heroes of the West is a man whose name supersedes his own legend. The name of the man is Kit Carson. Christopher Kit Carson was born in Madison County, Kentucky on December 24th, 1809. His father, Lindsey Carson, fought in the American Revolution. Lindsey married Rebecca Robinson in 1796. Kit was the sixth of ten children. The Carson family settled in Howard County, Missouri. When Kit was just nine years old, his father was tragically killed in an accident when a tree limb fell on him while he was clearing a field. It is doubtful that Carson received much of any formal education because he remained nearly illiterate or unable to read and write his entire lifetime. At the age of 14, he became an apprentice to a saddle maker where he began to learn the saddle trade. After less than two years, Carson left the saddle making business and joined a group of fur traders who were on their way to Santa Fe, New Mexico. Carson's career in the West spanned the years from 1825 to 1868, a period of rapid national expansion, exploration, and settlement. From 1827 to 1829, young Carson spent time working as a cook driving a wagon, interpreting Spanish, and mining copper. In August 1829, he gained invaluable experience after joining a trapping party bound for California. For the next year and a half, Carson trapped animals along the streams of Arizona in Southern California. Now these are what I call trapping streams. In 1831, Carson returned to New Mexico where he immediately joined up with the experienced trapper Thomas Fitzpatrick. With Fitzpatrick's men, Carson headed north into the rugged central Rocky Mountains. For the next 10 years, Carson worked as a trapper all over Western America in what is today known as Utah, Colorado, Wyoming, Idaho, and Montana. During this time spent in the wilderness of North America, Carson learned everything he needed to know in order to become a respected guide. In 1836, Carson married an Arapaho Indian woman. The couple had two children, only one of whom a daughter survived. After his first wife died, Carson then married a Cheyenne woman. The marriage did not last and Carson took his daughter to St. Louis, Missouri to further her education. For the next eight years, Carson split his time between his daughter in St. Louis and his trapping duties in Taos, in New 1842, Mexico. In 1842, Carson's fate arrived by steamboat when explorer John C. Fremont landed in St. Louis. Fremont came to St. Louis looking to hire the well-known guide Andrew S. Drips to lead his expedition to the Wind River in Wyoming. Unable to find Drips, Fremont chose Carson instead. From June until September, Carson guided Fremont's party west through South Pass to the Wind River Mountains and then back to Missouri. Over the next several years, Carson, along with Fitzpatrick, worked as a guide for Fremont on three expeditions through Oregon and California. The timing could not have been better for Fremont or for Carson. The American public was fascinated with life in the West and the tales of hostile Indian tribes, an unsettled land that could be found on the Western frontier. By 1849, Carson had settled near Taos to form and do occasional scouting for the army units fighting hostile tribes. Carson also served in the Office of Indian Affairs, first as an agent and then as a superintendent of Indian Affairs for the Colorado Territory. For years, Carson worked to keep the peace and to ensure fair treatment of the Native Americans. While working for the Office of Indian Affairs, Carson often clashed with his superior, Territorial Governor David Merriweather. Carson disagreed with many of Merriweather's policies and thought the Native Americans were being treated unfairly. 
1856, their conflicts boiled over when Meriwether suspended Carson. Meriwether later arrested Carson, charging him with disobedience and cowardice. Carson soon apologized and got his job back working as an agent. Fremont's published reports on his expeditions soon became famous, as did Kit Carson's. With the outbreak of the Civil War in 1861, Carson left his position with the Indian Affairs and was soon appointed a lieutenant colonel commanding the 1st New Mexico Volunteer Regiment. During the war, Carson fought against invaded Confederates at the Battle of Valverde. Carson also directed successful campaigns against the Apache and Navajo from 1862 until 1864. In his last battle, he defeated the Kiowa, Comanche, and Apache tribes in the Texas Panhandle. In 1865, he was appointed as Brigadier General of Volunteers. For the next two years, Carson held assignments in the West until he left the Army in 1867. In 1868, Carson was appointed Superintendent of Indian Affairs for the Colorado Territory. He never had a chance to work in this position as he died May 23, 1868 at Fort Lyon, Colorado. Although many of Carson's adventures would become wildly exaggerated, no one could deny his contributions to the settling of the American frontier. Thank you for watching this video, and if you like this content, please be sure to share, like, and subscribe as it helps others find content like this. Thanks, guys.